Well, hey friends, today I am here to talk with you about the life giving home, the November chapter. So I read this chapter on the day after the election. If you're unfamiliar, I'm an American living in Canada, and um, that was a really interesting day. I remember feeling quite heavy, um, just with all of the bombardment of the feelings and emotions that were going on with the people around me, namely being on um, like social media, Facebook and stuff. Um, I had a wide range of emotions that were going on with friends, everything from absolute elation to utter devastation. Um, and then the other twist on the mix was that being in Canada, I also had a news feed filled with questions from Canadians. Um, why would you elect someone like Trump or um, just all kinds of things. And it was so heavy and burdensome on my heart. Like my spirit just felt so heavy. And I ended up opening up this book because um, I just always feel so encouraged and inspired when I read Sally's words. Um, earlier that day, I had posted something on Facebook, um, mainly about how um, there's going to be all kinds of stuff that happens in the world, and the only thing that we control can control is the environment within our homes and how we are raising up the next generation and how we are treating and loving one another that we come in contact with. And I found so much of the feelings that I was feeling um, and expressing and in that um, thought of, you know, um, loving others and creating a space of welcome and nurture and raising up an honorable and integral next generation. Um, she talked about uh, kind of a lot of that within this chapter, at least it just seemed to really hit where I was at that moment. So um, in November, Americans celebrate Thanksgiving. It's such a wonderful holiday. I'm going home to visit with my family. Um, I haven't been home for a holiday in about four years. I haven't even been home in a year and a half. Um, and my family does holidays well. They are holiday people and I'm so, so, so excited. And some of the things that Sally talked about um, in this chapter are things that my family did. And namely was the first one. Um, Sally and her family did not have um, a steady home. Um, so they moved all over, all over, all of the time. I think, I could be wrong, but I think she said they moved like 18 different times um, before settling where they are now in Colorado. And um, so when it came to holidays like Thanksgiving, uh, they said that they often, there wasn't a lot of tradition around uh, Thanksgiving because they didn't live near family and they were, because they were moving so often, it was hard to uh, make friendships and set down roots and things like that. And so um, it just wasn't very special for them. And then one year they decided to invite other people who were sort of in that same boat as them who didn't have family around or who didn't have a place to celebrate um, to their home. And it was a hodgepodge of people of all different backgrounds and um but they all came together uh, to celebrate Thanksgiving. And that was just something that my mom always instilled in us uh, growing up is that she had always said that uh, for Thanksgiving and the holidays, she always wanted to make sure that if someone didn't have a place to celebrate, that they had a spot at our table. And I appreciated that so much. Um, and it was very true. My mom often did invite people that um, didn't have a place to be uh, and so it was it was such a good lesson for me to learn and as I go forward in celebrating holidays and preparing my home and my family and my table um, to celebrate these um, these gifts of holidays because 
I feel like holidays are a gift. Um, they are a reason to connect, to get together, to celebrate and turn inward, but also outward at the same time. Inward to think about the meaning of why we're celebrating in the first place, to think about goodness and gratitude and um, expressing love to one another um, and doing that outwardly to not just think about those things but to actually express them and so in inviting people who maybe don't have a place to celebrate, who don't have family nearby or um, who maybe are a widower or a widow um, and invite them into your space and even if you don't know them well um, and that was kind of the big uh, thing that she mentioned here is that you know the people didn't necessarily know one another. The invited guests didn't know one another. Um, and Sally and her kids didn't know these people very well either. But such community was created um, among the, the people that were invited. And it was a tradition that they carried on. Um, so one thing that she said about that is, um, In the fallow soil of a lonely moment, we planted the seed of fellowship. And ah, oh, how it has grown over the years into a harvest of friendship, of honesty and struggle, and of a gratitude that could only grow out of a sorrow transformed. Because again, um, they said, A strange lonely Thanksgiving taught us to understand our home is a place in which sadness may be admitted, but also transformed. And I thought that was really interesting because sometimes when it comes to holidays, and maybe you experience this too, um, we anticipate or hope for that um, Hallmark Christmas or that Hallmark holiday where um, there may be a problem, but somehow it all just magically disappears in the end and all things turn out right and the guy always gets the girl and life always ends up happy and rosy. But we know that that isn't always reality and sometimes the holidays are very hard. It's a time and a space where sometimes we are brought together with people that maybe we have conflict with um, and that their relationships are hard um, and you are forced to be in that space together. Um, and so it can bring up a lot of emotion or maybe you are faced with a tragedy that has happened within that past year and this is your first holiday without someone special in your life or um, or maybe there's just something different that makes the holiday difficult and there can be a lot of sorrow associated with the holidays and so um, yeah it can be a space where there's sorrow but there does also have the opportunity to transform that sorrow into joy and into connectedness as you connect and grow and spend um, community with other people. So I like what she said here, um, and this is this is Sarah that's talking, this is Sally's daughter. I guess I forgot to um, start the chapter off right, if you will, I just kind of dove right in. Um, the November chapter is called Blessed and Blessing, Grace, Gratitude, and Generosity, written by Sarah. And the quote says, we would worry less if we praised more. Thanksgiving is the enemy of discontent and dissatisfaction. That's by H.A. Ironside. Um, and then she, she talks um, a bit more about home and she says, home isn't just about happy people making good memories. Very important. It's so true, right? Home is the shelter where the lonely find rest and the sorrowing come to be comforted. Home is the place where struggles may be admitted and loneliness acknowledged. It's the place where it is safe to admit how difficult, how dark, how lonely the world sometimes is. But it's also the ground in which those sorrows are sheltered and softened, where by the alchemy of welcome and acceptance, good food and conversation, candlelight and laughter, hope, hope and, sorry guys, <laughs> hope and, <laughs> that again. where the, where, by the alchemy of welcome and acceptance, good food and conversation, candlelight and laughter, hope and even gratitude grow. As our own need drew others in, we learned that our reluctant generosity could become the seedbed for grace. I just find that so beautiful. Um, and then they go on to talk about um, the Great Thanksgiving, and they talk about um, in the earliest days of the Christian Church and the Sacrament of Communion um, and what that looked like. And so she talks about um, Communion, and she said, um, taking bread and depending on the tradition, wine or juice, reminds us in a very visceral way what 
that what we celebrate in the Christian faith isn't just about our Sunday happiness in heaven. God's incarnation in the world through Christ, his presence in his body and blood, tells us that he is profoundly with us now, healing life even here in a broken world. The Eucharist reminds us that every aspect of our lives, physical and spiritual, joyous and grieved, present and future, is caught up in the story of God's ongoing redemption. It began long ago and continues now in love that transforms sorrow, in life that springs up in our loneliness, in grace that redeems our moments of despair. The feast signaling this reality is called Thanksgiving because through it we do more than just receive Christ. We also begin to live out the reality of his presence in us. Our lives become a reflection of his love, our generous actions a refrain of our gratitude for his life in us. Our lives themselves become a great thanksgiving. I just, I, whoo, yeah, I just find that so beautiful. Our lives become a thanksgiving. A thanksgiving for the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross for us. The sacrifice of um, coming to earth and, and living and dying and, um, and becoming that, that's that ultimate sacrifice for us. We um, can partake in that just by simply accepting and welcoming him into our hearts and in our lives and living for him. We have that free gift that he gives us. Um, and truly that is, we, we should and we can get to operate out of that thanksgiving for that sacrifice um, in our everyday lives. When we come to see our homes as the places in which God's gift to himself, our daily bread, meets our brokenness and transforms it, the thanks and praise in us begins to make our very lives a prayer, a great thanksgiving. In the words of a prayer that often follows the Eucharist in traditional Anglican churches, and this is the prayer, we offer you ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us into the world in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and to your glory. Amen. And then they go on to talk about um, how home is for giving. Um, and so again, a bit, they were talking a bit more about gratitude and I loved this quote, gratitude in its very essence yearns to give. And it's so, it's so true when you are so thankful and you have gratitude, um, you want to give that away. It's, um, it becomes something that you so selflessly want to give to other people because the opposite of gratitude is, I think, like selfishness, where you want to keep everything to yourself, but gratitude says, here, let me bless you, here, let me serve you, here, let me, let me give away, and um, yeah, at its very essence, it yearns to give, and I think that can be such a check mark for us. Are we living in gratitude? And if we are not living in gratitude, um, let us check our hearts and examine them and see why that is. Um, maybe you're dealing with past hurts or um, there's a seed of, or a root of bitterness that's growing. Um, why isn't gratitude taking shape in your life um, and how can you foster that? And I think first of all you need to pray and ask the Lord to show you where um, where things are holding you back, what is keeping you bound from um, offering gratitude into other people, into the world, into um, into the people within your home and in your four walls. What What is that? What's holding you back? And um, maybe you do operate from a place of gratitude. Maybe you long to serve other people. Maybe you long to, um, and you do um, extend grace and gratitude and, um, and that embodies you and if that is I pray that you will continue to do that with a selfless heart and that um, that would be um, in the forefront and that you teach the generations that are around you whether you have little ones or you're a grandma um, surrounded by other little ones or maybe they're big ones um, that you would continue to pour into that uh, into the those around you and teach them and train them how to um, give gratitude and extend that. I've got about one minute left here and I'm just going to go through the last couple quotes here and then in the next video we will talk about um, how they practically celebrated Thanksgiving. So, 
Gratitude isn't a gutting out of thanks, nor is it generosity a painful sacrifice. Rather, both come from an overflow of joy, and neither is formed in a vacuum. Both must come from recognizing that God's goodness to us is so extravagant, it must be passed on. The essence of true thanksgiving is that we, having received the life of God into ourselves, then take his life into the world, drawing others into his feast of grace. And that is the point at which generosity begins. That is the moment when we are compelled to open the doors of our homes, to open our hearts to the hungering people around us. Our thanks becomes incarnate in the grace we extend, the hospitality we offer, the love we speak. Each of these things, one more aspect of the lives we live, is a great and constant giving of thanks. I grew to realize that home was a gift. I must learn how to give again. That's it for this portion of the chapter. I've got five seconds left. I will see you in the next video. Leave your comments below. Bye. Um, and earlier that day, I had posted something on Facebook about... Um, my skin looks so orange right now. <laughs> such lighting. Um, yeah.